Hello everyone, I'm Janelle of Tunes Unlimited and for this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use shadows to bring out more of your animation and since Crazy Talk Animator does not allow you to draw within the application one of the very first things you need to do is create a quick and simple shadow. So I'm going to show you how to use um, the e Eclipse tool. In this case, I'm in Affinity Designer, but you can do this stuff in simple applications like PowerPoint or um, you can use Photoshop, any type of uh, editor that will allow you to draw a simple shape. In this case, I'm going to just draw a oval using the Eclipse tool and I want to make sure that it's completely black and that the opacity has been turned down. And you can have it at whatever setting is your choice for the shadow because you can make additional modifications within Crazy Talk Animator. But basically this is my my shape and from there, you can just simply save it as a PNG file and import it into the application. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out and bring up Crazy Talk Animator. Okay, so here we are inside the application and I have my character here, which will be the dog in this case. And I have my shadow imported in. And off the top, I can see that my shadow is just a little bit darker than what I would like. So the good thing is this application has um, this application has a internal um, opacity. So I'm going to turn my opacity down just a little bit more. Say about right there. And you want to make sure that your shadow is behind your character. So it's nice and behind the character. And so for what we're going to do for this tutorial, I'm going to create a quick animation. I'm going to go to the um, options and I'm going to have them do a run start. start. Sorry, make sure I can click on the character. So I'm going to have them do a run start and then a run loop. And I'm just going to have him maintain this loop to the end so I'm, my project is only 300 frames long and here is my run loop and I'm going to have it run all the way to the end and I'm just going to play it out to make sure it looks right and it does and let's say this is 300 frame so let's say at about 280 we have him run off screen so what I'm going to do is find the dog the dog's timeline let me load this up so I can get the right frames and I'm going to scroll down to 280 just about right here And I'm going to create a, a transform key. And then I'm going to go all the way down to 300 and create one more transform key. Because at 300, I want this guy off the screen. So I'm just going to make sure his tail clears the screen. And make sure it's nice and straight for the most part. All right, so that's good. And so let's just play it out up to, I'll say frame 200 and see how it looks. Okay. And that's all I want for this character to do. Now, here's some of the fun things we can do with the shadow. I'm going to go ahead the first thing we're going to do is create the start run using the shadow and then we're going to create the run loop. Now for the run loop, I'm going to create the animation once 
I'm going to save the motion and then I'm going to turn around and loop it just like I did for the dog's run loop. So we're at the beginning frame and I'm going to be using the deform tool. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. And I'm just going to follow the motions of the dog to create my shadow. So the dog squishes in and this is when he's at his tightest. So what I want to do, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to play around a little bit with the opacity. So let me bring this up. And we already have an opacity setting right here. So let me create a key. But when he comes in nice and tight like this, I want it to get darker. So right here, I want the opacity to get darker for the shadow. And it's currently at 43, so I want it to get about maybe 65. And in addition to that, because he's coming tighter, I want to bring his shadow in a little tighter too. And so we'll go a few more frames out. And right here, this is where the run loop starts. So I want to get one more frame before. And this is where the run start ends. So the first thing I want to do, so I don't forget, is get my opacity back to 43. <laughs> So let me close this out and go to opacity and we're going to shrink it back to 43. And then with my deform tool, I'm going to stretch him out in different ways that kind of matches up with his body. And that's the cool thing about the deform tool. You can make this shadow a little bit more realistic and have it go with his body. So these are the three frames for the run start. And you see it gets starker and stretches out and it looks great. And now this is where the run loop begins. So, I, I really don't see any neat reason to um, create a different shadow stretch. I'm just going to go ahead and create a key. And then I'm going to go and follow this out a few frames. Now, I find this interesting. This is kind of where he's at his lowest again. So let me bring this in kind of tight. And I am going to once again bring the opacity up to about 65, maybe even about 80, because he's really close to that ground. And then I'm going to go a few frames out. Oh, this is a cool pose right here. And I want to shrink him since he's so high up in the air. I want to show the appearance of things shrinking again. And maybe have it be a little darker. About 94. And then we're going to have him recover and go into a stretch. And this is where this is where he seems like he's his longest. So by the time he's stretched back out like this, I want it back at uh, I believe it was forty three. And with the deform tool, I'm gonna go ahead and stretch his shadows back out.
and let's see where we are with our loop. We have a little ways to go. We're like at the halfway point for the run loop. And we know how the run loop will begin. So, um, well, I won't copy it. We'll just keep playing it out. So this is what we have so far. So this looks good. We can stretch it more here. So let's let's play around with that more. So now we're going to go into the second half of the loop. And since he's got contact right here, Let's go ahead and bring everything in to match his foot movement. Uh -oh. There we go, sorry. And once again, we can bring the opacity to about 65. And right here, uh -oh, I believe I moved it. Let me do an undo. So right here, we're going to bring them in some more. And bring the opacity up some. And I believe this is the last frame before our loop ends. So let's make sure we get a nice frame loop here. And this is where the loop will start over again. So let's just play out these 35 frames and see what we have. That looks very organic. And then what we can do is just see it real time. All right. And now it's time for us to simply create a, a loop, just like we did with the run. So I'm going to go where this run loop starts. And this starts on frame 10. And it ends on frame 35. So I want to collect, and I'm, I'm under the shadow, and I want to make sure collect clip is highlighted because I want it to start from frame 10 and go all the way up to here where it ends. And I'm going to right click on it and hit add to action menu, and I'm going to call it drop shadow. So what I've done is I've wanted to save this under my action men menu. So when I go here under action menu, you'll see that I have drop shadow run. And what I can do is now go to where the next loop starts. I can right click and hit drop shadow run and it will create that loop. Now, just like the dog, I can loop this all the way shrink it down to 300 and we can play this out and see how it looks again it looks very organic 
except for when he takes off. So now we just need to do one more thing and we need that shadow to take off right when he takes off. So we know that at 280 is when the movement starts. So we're gonna scroll all the way down to 280. And right here's the transform tool for the dog. And here's my transform tool for the shadow. And we want it to line up on frame 80. And this is it right here. So I'm going to double click to create a keyframe. And on frame 300, just like I did with the dog, I want to double click. Be nice to me. There we go. And have a keyframe as well. And just like the dog, I'm I'm going to just have it drag all the way over and kind of line up straight, just like he did. Now, I'm not going to play the whole animation out. What I'm going to do is to scrum up to maybe 200 here and just see how it looks when he takes off running. And there you go. So this is how you can use shadows to enhance your animation. Now, I will say with a dog, it was a little bit more complex um, compared to the human, only because with the human, you can normally just link the shadow with a core object on his body, like the stomach or the torso, and you can tell it to follow the character. Whereas with the dog, I'm going to show you what happens if you attempt to do that same measure with the dog. Because his whole body is moving up and down the way it's doing it, this is how your animation will look like. So in this case, you want to do it separate. But if he was a human, you can tell it to follow him and you can link it to the stomach and as long as he's not doing any crazy movement, um, you shouldn't have any problem. So I'm, let me go ahead and unlink it. But this is a simple tutorial on how you can create a shadow for your character and how you can animate it and make it look more organic by doing stuff like increasing the opacity when the shadow is near... It's most closest to the object and shrinking the opacity when it's far away. The same thing with um, stretching it, bringing it in tight when it's close and stretching it when um, the limbs are further away. Hope all of this helps. Take care. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for new content every week. If you would like to purchase my product, head over to my store for characters, props, and scenes. If you enjoyed this video, here is a link to another video you might like from this channel. Thanks for joining and take care.